All right. Great. Uh, thanks. Thanks for everyone for joining in for the webinar on uh, whiteboard dot chat for beginners. Uh, we uh, are a small company based in San Jose, California, and we started whiteboard dot chat just purely because last year when our uh, our own uh, uh, kids were beginning to uh, join some of the online classes, uh, you could clearly see that they were having difficulties. And uh, so we took some existing technology and we uh, put some st uh, some of these features that you'll be about to see together to start with. And then this was picked up and, and it rapidly grew from there. So um, our intention for this webinar is that um, uh, we will demo some of the basic features of uh, whiteboard.chat. So the, we would like uh, you to be able to uh, take uh, some existing classroom material, put it up on, on whiteboard.chat, have students join in, and then go through the, uh, the motions of uh, orchestrating a class. Uh, and then uh, please do type in your questions in the Zoom chat window, uh, as I just noted uh, on the chat window. Uh, my colleague uh, Dhawal is also on this call. He will voice uh, the questions over the chat. I will periodically pause and ask him with any questions. And that way we can answer them and for the benefit of everybody. Uh, then I would also be setting up a board where you can all join in and experience whiteboard.chat as students. And uh, then of course you, we can uh, take additional questions and answers. We typically do the regular session for about an hour and um, then stay back say about 10, 15 minutes or even sometimes half an hour to answer uh, specific questions that uh, teachers may have. Um, all right, so let's get started. So as I mentioned uh, earlier, we, uh, we started whiteboard.chat just as, you know, as, as a tool for some of our uh, teachers to initially start uh, working with online classes and to be able to uh, uh, manage their online classes uh, as, uh, you know, as everybody was learning at that time last year around this time. And uh, so what we noticed was observability, that just the ability for, for teachers to see what their students are doing and to get them engaged was, was very tricky. And that's where there was no solution that was uh, really addressing that problem. So we have on the left-hand side, what we have here is, a is the learning management systems, the LMSs that everyone's familiar with. And then on the bottom right, we have the regular conferencing solutions, right? They, and they all uh, serve the part of the need. One is to just communicate and the other one is to get yourself organized and maintain your um, your over uh, curriculum, right? But to uh, engage students and uh, and observe them and to communicate with them at the same time with the classroom material, there was nothing there. So that's where whiteboard dot chat comes in and fills in that gap to uh, address observability, engagement, and communication. the The marquee feature that this is the key feature that we started with is the ability to give uh, uh, is ability for teachers to be able to. Uh, present material, but at the same time, have the students work on that uh, their assignments on that material and also to ob observe them on a one on one basis what they're doing. So the teacher can not only join a particular students uh, board and see what the student is doing, how the student is making progress uh, in the assignment, but the teacher can get even a, a overall view of the whole classroom as well. Uh, and um, the great part about this is that not only is it real time, so you can share a board so as a teacher, the teachers can share a board and watch the students um, work on the assignments, but the teacher can uh, real time also make modifications with the board, the teacher, the students get to see it right away. The students can work on their assignments in the classroom and then again, go, uh, go back after class and continue working on it. So you can work, use it in in class in a hybrid in uh, completely online environment so it's 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 completely a mix and match sort of a um, pattern that you can follow and you can prepare your material beforehand and have it ready so several teachers uh, prepare their material even on weekends get their classrooms ready and then you know they can use their time much more effectively during the week so we'll we'll go through all of these uh, uh, capabilities uh, so we started whiteboard.chat, like I said, around uh, last year, say um, around July, August timeframe. And um, we uh, we grew from there. It, it is largely based, uh, the, the adoption was all word of mouth. Uh, we uh, had an initial set of teachers who had started using it. We, we, we call, of course, we call those as pioneer teachers. And uh, they gave, a, gave us tons of feedback as to what uh, what exactly is missing in all these tools. 
uh, all the other tools and uh, what specifically teachers need so we took that feedback and you know kept improving uh, this this the software to come up with a solution which is become which has become so unique and it has evolved in this way primarily because of all the feedback that teachers have given us so uh, you know we 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 still uh, are in that mode where we would love to hear from teachers and implement exactly what you need right so so please write to us at feedback at whiteboard.chat and uh, that's where we really uh, get to know how uh, teachers are engaging their students wh what modifications to our existing features or even new features they would need to 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 uh, to, to organize and run their classes more effectively we are extremely active even on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So um, Dawal had already pasted a few links I see on um, on the Zoom chat windows. So there's a there's a group called uh, Teachers Using Whiteboard dot chat on Facebook, which is very very active. Uh, there's there's teachers who ask questions, and now initially we used to answer them directly, but now there are so many teachers who've picked up Whiteboard dot chat, dot chat and become so familiar with it that the teachers help them, uh, other teachers out. Uh, they not only suggest new ideas to do things, but if some, if there's a particular feature that they're having problems with, you know, they, they bring it up. If, it, if it's a genuine issue, we can we, we clearly point it out to them saying, yes, something is broken, we, we can fix it and we can move from there. So it's a, a very active channel and good for you to be part of as well. Uh, we also post uh, the recordings of these webinars on our YouTube channel. The YouTube link is also included in the Zoom uh, chat window. And so, yeah, we, after the end of this webinar, we will post the video. Uh, you can also go and view previous webinars because, you know, every webinar is kind of uh, evolves slightly differently based on new features that get added based on the questions that get asked. So it's, it's definitely worth your while to go back and look at some of the earlier videos as well. We we use, we normally have two uh, formats of this this webinar. So it, there's a basic webinar and, and an advanced webinar, and so this one of course is covering the basic features. But there's also an advanced one which talks a little bit more about the more complex features and which uh, which some of the teachers who are very familiar with why but board chat can pick it up and start using later. So uh, you can certainly sign up for the advanced webinar as well. That will be coming up uh, I think two weeks from now. So let's get started. I will go over to our main service. So as you can see, this is, you just need to go to whiteboard.chat to start using our service. Uh, it, uh, it really does not require any software download. You, all you need to do is take uh, any device like a laptop, a desktop or a tablet or a Chromebooks, Surface books, um, even your four iPhones and just go to whiteboard.chat and you can start using this service. So there's no special download itself required. Uh, there, there's quite often uh, uh, teachers require uh, teachers require their school districts to approve whiteboard.chat before they can start to use it. And so for, for those uh, uh, purposes, we have a privacy and terms of use all linked uh, at the bottom left of this page, you can see there. And um, certainly you can get some more help from uh, up here too. So when you click on start drawing, you will see three options. One is the start teaching mode, which is what we will uh, dive into much, uh, much more in detail in this webinar. There's also this mode called start collaborating. So collaborating mode is, um, it brings up a whiteboard where uh, you, you, all the participants are on, an, on a level basis. So they, they're just essentially the role of every individual on that collaborating board is just a participant. Everybody gets the same tools. And um, the, the, when when anyone annotates the board, everybody gets to see that too. So there's a single copy of it that everybody's working on, right? It's more like a traditional whiteboard that most of other services provide. And manage boards is an area where you can organize your boards and view view the boards that you may have already prepared. So we'll look at that separately too. So let's dive into start teaching because this is where you would a uh, teacher would create, assign, and live teach individual student boards. So let's go into that. Uh, so yeah, this is the, the instructor board as you would see up here. So it says on the title here, instructor board. So when we look at the student board, you can see that it would change the student. Uh, there's also the uh, a mode of where, where students can work in a group. And uh, so then the board would say essentially group board, right? So um, so let, let me walk to you through some of the, uh, the user interface elements up here. So this is our main toolbar itself on the left-hand side. If you click on this, uh, the three lines here, which is also called as the hamburger menu, 
uh, it expands and you can get a, a much more a much better text description of all the various options available here so we'll go through several of these today uh, then we have uh, the, the one, one thing to note here is that you can click on the the title here to name the board so let me call this april 7th right and then just hit enter uh, or, or click on here on the board and your name is assigned now you have a few different options here one is manipulatives there's a way to help students there's some class timers some settings uh, the, all the participants that are here and then a few actions uh, available in, in what we also call as a three dots menu okay so uh, and then what we have down here is uh, is is a quick panel for you to uh, change some other settings so for example now you have a plain whiteboard and usually you can just start annotating right you can just start drawing you can type in some text so all that you need to do is just um, start typing and it will become text here and so a few things you can do is let's say i want to change the line thickness i can do that with this control here so i can make it fairly thick i can there's a toggle button here to also draw a dashed line if you'd like so if i want a thinner dashed line i can do that and then i also have the ability to uh, change the text size so let's say i want a larger font let's say large and i can also change the font uh, type itself so uh, you have we have a few different uh, font types that are included and in some sense you know so some of this is simple enough because we'd like uh, students to be also to be able to use it so if, if some of these tools we could make them uh, really complex but you know this is de by design it's chosen to be a little bit easier to use okay and then we also have an opacity controller here. So um, you can click on this icon here to be able to uh, get like a, uh, a marker. So let me choose a different color. I can select, let's say yellow. And, um, and now I, I can have a larger font here, so a larger pen thickness, and I can use it like a marker if I want, right? And I can just click, I can either slide this uh, or I can just click on this back again and it becomes uh, solid again. Let me go back to a slightly better color here. Now, one control that you might need quite frequently while teaching is that is uh, the ability to clear your board. So if I just clear this, I can just erase everything that's on this text here. Okay. So uh, let's uh, uh, think about what you would have to do initially just as a teacher. Right? One of the most basic things that you that you've already already want to do is you have some existing teaching material and you want to upload that in for, uh, for your students to work on. So there's uh, the ability for you to upload the file. So let me open this for a second so you get to see this so upload file and you can upload from computer or from your Google Drive as well. So let's say I choose from my computer here and i have a place value chart assignment so i'm going to upload that so this takes a second to upload so as you can see this was just a simple pdf it's a, it already has the assignment prepared and now this this happens to be a, a three page pdf so if at the bottom left if i click on this control which opens up like a th thumbnail view i can see that it has already uploaded three pages and if I navigate over to the second and third page, you can see that the assignments are available as individual pages. So uh, I can start with as little as this, right? So I've already prepared my assignment. Now I want to invite um, a student, right? So what I need to do now is I go up to the invite button here and you can, it brings up this panel. You have a few different options or a few different ways in which you can invite students. So if your students are using iPads, for example, they can scan this with, uh, with their iPad. And so the way this would work is just, just as I am sharing this over Zoom with you, uh, you might be doing a Zoom session with your students or it could be WebEx or any other uh, or Google Meet, right? So, but they would be able to scan this and then that opens up the whiteboard for them on their iPad. Uh, another way to do it is to copy this uh, link and then uh, paste this link. So what I can do is let, I'm going to open another browser window, an incognito window, and I'm going to paste this up here. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. Maybe even out of the screen. Okay. All right. So as a student, I'm going to paste this link here. So now 
you may you will see that the student gets requested for a name now the student does not really require to log in so uh, the whiteboard.chat can be used anonymously completely so you can the teachers can just uh, start teaching without logging in prepare a, a class invite students and, and use it there the students do not need to create accounts either but um, if the teacher prefers the teacher can uh, request them to log in so that she uh, he or she has better control about who's logging in what names they are assigning to themselves and so on so let's say that I type in the student name as just a student, easy to identify. Let me pick a color which is a little bit easier for you to see. Maybe this one. So we can differentiate between the student and teacher. So as you can see, the student board is marked as student up here. Now I'm going to make this a little smaller here so you get to see both at the same time. So yeah, going back to the invite board options, there are a few different options here. Um, so you you can also share a, in the classroom code. So um, on the whiteboard.chat homepage, you could, you could see that there was an option to enter the classroom code there as well. So that's another option. Another way to invite students is to uh, click on this and invite it uh, in, uh, and then include the invitation in a class in your Google Classroom. So you can choose which classroom you'd like to post it into and this directly uh, includes that uh, link there. The, we have also integrated with Microsoft Teams. So if you have Teams account, then you can click on this and that enables you to um, uh, share this in a particular classroom or a channel as well. So you can create an assignment and that uh, that, that would automatically include this URL uh, out there. So a few different options here. All right, so let's see, as a student now, I uh, have joined the class and now I can, let's say the student is working on the assignment. So all that the student needs to do is say, let's say they want to do 3.5. So I'm just going to type in some stuff here, right? So, and so on. And then the, the student also has access to several of the tools. So let's say the student wants to draw a line or maybe an arrow actually, right? So, and they want to draw the same type of arrow and move it maybe further down here. Or so yeah, this is multiplied by 10, but okay, that's fine, they're learning, right? And now as a, as a teacher, I'd like to see what, what progress the student has made. So I can go to the grid view. So this is, as you can see, this is uh, uh, this option is available only to the teachers on the, stu on the student board. Let me go back here. Sorry. On the student board, uh, there's no grid view available because the students can only work on their boards. The students cannot see their other students' boards. They cannot see the teacher's board unless the teacher shares it. And um, so let's see what the teacher sees in the grid view. So as you can see, there's uh, one board, which is the teacher's board, and the other one is the student board itself. The teacher can click on this and see what changes the student is working on. The student can even uh, mark certain things. So real time, as you can see, uh, as a student works on, on things, it gets annotated and updated uh, real time on the, on the teacher's board as well. Right? So let me uh, also send the invite to uh, Dhawal so we can get a few more students uh, joining the board. Let me copy this and send it to him. All right, so he can join in a second. So let's look at, uh, now, now there are a few different things you can do with the grid view. There's, uh, so uh, let me go back and show you that how you entered the grid view just in case uh, you want to see that. So this grid view option is available down here. You click on that. And now uh, by default, you get the, uh, the a view which, uh, is, which shows you three boards on each row and then it can show you some additional students down here. But you can change that format by, by having additional boards per row if you'd like, or you can even reduce them. And that way you get a slightly larger set of tiles as well. Now, there are some features that I, I covered, like for example, there's an option called the board browser. So some of these things we cover in our advanced webinars. So uh, certainly you can sign up for the advanced to learn about those, or you can view the videos of the advanced webinars as well. Okay, so let me just pause here for a second and see if there are any questions already. Uh, not, not really. Uh, now there is one question. Uh, how can I write on my board without writing on my student's board? Okay. So uh, let's see, now that the teacher has prepared an assignment here, and uh, now let's say the teacher wants to show exactly what needs to be done, right? So, so for example, the teacher types in something out here, let's say three, and four, five, or something, right? And now 
uh, if I go to the student board, oh, this looks like it's overwritten, right? So that's not what the teacher wanted. And so to av avoid that, now what you can do, now the, here's an eraser that the teacher can use. I'm going to erase these, these things that I wrote. So the teacher can now uh, go to the actions here. And there's an option called toggle replication to students. So there are several different options here. We'll, we'll kind of look at some of the key ones that you need to orchestrate your class. So there's an option called toggle replication to students because whatever the teacher writes is immediately getting replicated to the student board. So now it says real-time replication is disabled. So the teacher can now work on this and the whatever modif modifications the teacher is making, now they do not show up on, on by mistake, I moved this PDF. So let me refresh and make sure it shows up. Oh, pardon me, I moved the PDF and now it, uh, it stopped replicating the PDF as well. So let me just make sure that that shows up. Now I can go to the second page and see whether that's there. Just work on the second page here. So let me toggle replication to students again. Okay, and I'm going to type in text. Right, and as you can see now, the student board doesn't have this because uh, you just have enabled to disable the replication to students. And so you can work, you can show them, uh, um, sort of gu guide them on how to work on an uh, pro progress with their assignment without really uh, overwriting their work. And then whenever you're uh, ready, you can either erase this and then again, uh, disable, enable replication so it starts to show. Now, one thing to remember is that any of the objects that the teacher adds when you uh, have replication disabled, those do not automatically get copied after you enable replication again. So that's actually a useful feature because you don't want them to suddenly start to show up there. But that's also a little bit of a tricky feature because it, as we've run into a situation where, people, where it's, um, teachers enable toggle replication to students and then they prepare their whole board. And uh, then when the students join in, they don't see anything. They just see a blank board because none of the objects that were added by the teacher when the replication was disabled they, none of them show up on the student's board. So that becomes a difficult problem. So, so definitely do not uh, disable replication when you are preparing the board because you know you want all your, uh, your material to show up on the student board. Yeah, any other questions? Yes, uh, if you look at it on the top left corner, we have whiteboard.chart and there is a code there. Now, can you explain what that code is and how sure. that code came about? Yeah, so uh, the thinking was that, so several times if a student joins a classroom a little bit late, they they don't need to interrupt the teacher to join the, the class board. They can just simply look at this code when they, because the teacher is typically going to be sharing their screen on Zoom. So they may be able to just look at this code and then go to whiteboard.chat, type, type in the code and, uh, and away they go and they join the board uh, by themselves. Uh, all, and then what we have here, and this is the same code that you have here in the invites, right? So you see there's the same same code. And an, another sort of a pro tip is that this link that you copied from out here, right? This is the same link that gets copied to your clipboard if you click on this icon here, right? So this just becomes a shortcut for you to uh, send out the invite. One teacher is saying that they type the code, but it does not let them in. Uh, so this, uh, did you type uh, this particular code, S S A Q, or some other code? Did you mean, uh, Nikki? Maybe you want to just unmute yourself, and maybe you can explain what you did. And we have a small group. I think it's okay. Yeah, it should be fine. So from what I can see, it looks like S A Q capital R capital J capital H capital nine. Mm -hmm. That's and correct. I typed it into where it says enter classroom code, mm -hmm. but it, it, I'm not seeing the same screen as you. What I'm seeing is the um, very beginning, whiteboard.chat, start drawing. So where sh what should I see when I type in the code? Okay, so let me do this. Let me copy this code. Okay, and then I will have my student uh, go to whiteboard.chat. Uh, 
and I enter the classroom code here and I click join class. And that's what you should be able to see. You should, you might uh, not see the first page PDF, but you might see the, the writing. Uh, you might see a blank page because the first page is currently blank from a teacher's point of view. So if I say, oh, there it is. So, uh, the okay. Page. So it was that I had to click join, not just. Yes. yes. Oh yes. Okay. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So join, not enter. Yes, I, I think that's that's something that I think we could improve is if you hit enter, that should also let you. But if you click on join, that should work. So and I can already see that uh, you've joined our board. So yes, that's thank good. you. All right. Okay, so um, so this is to be honest with you, some some many of the teachers are just using this much of uh, of whiteboard dot chat. These many features of whiteboard dot chat to get going because they want to upload their PDF and have their students work on it look at the grid view, see how much progress they're making. And that's all that they need. So, and which is totally fine, right? So uh, the remaining set of things that we will go over are, are essentially more like bells and whistles and things that will make teaching even more effective and more engaging, right? So do keep that in mind. There's, there's, there's a ton of, ton of features here, but don't let it overwhelm you. And uh, uh, just, Look for specific things that you need. Uh, ask questions uh, to us over um, feedback at whiteboard.chat or on Facebook group, and you know we can help you out. So let's start now looking into some of the other more detailed capabilities that uh, that we can we can have. Uh, let's let's go into the actions menu, the three dots menu here. Now this is uh, an interesting uh, feature, open class board. It opens up a panel which lets you do a few things as a teacher in a much more fluid and easier way. So for example, if I want to join uh, Dawal's board, I can just directly click on his name and it takes me to um, his board directly. So I can now um, help him out saying, you know, hey, this is good work and things like that. So now if, if I um, go into grid view, I should be able to see that, but I don't need to go back to the grid view. Now, if I want to switch to a different student, I can just directly go to my student board as well. I just need to click on it. And if I want to go to a specific page of that student's board, I can also click on, put the page number right here and then click on that. And that directly takes me to the page number there. So it's a little bit much easier for you to uh, surf between student boards using the open class boards. You can do several other things. Uh, you can lock student boards. You can even uh, remove students from uh, your classroom if for example you don't identify you or you, uh, you are unable to figure out who a particular student is you can even remove them uh, so as a security feature it is useful uh, so this is certainly a useful feature to have uh, open class boards then um, there are a few other things that are uh, quite useful here uh, one is uh, set background so for example if you'd like to have a different type of uh, a color to either uh, just to make it a little bit more engaging or even some teachers use the background color to identify a specific assignment for certain students and group them and, and things like that. Uh, so you have a few different options here. Uh, there's also the uh, option to uh, uh, set out polls and reset borders and things like that. So we'll look at a few of those in a, in, in a little bit. Now, um, Another thing that you can do is lock all objects on this page. So by, by when you do that, it, it prevents the deletion, accidental deletion of all objects on that page. So uh, it's, it's useful uh, in that sense so that you don't have to individually go and lock um, uh, the, uh, uh, the various items on your board, especially if you have a really busy board. So that's a real quick overview of just the actions menu. Let's take a look at all the various tools that you have here. So there's, uh, uh, let's start with the tools section. And now, one thing that you may notice that this, uh, there's a way to favorite a certain icons. So for example, if you'd like to have the tools always up here and you would like to have your draw tool always up here, then you can do that so that you, know, you don't have to keep looking for them. They're all there. And then if you need to uh, unfavorite them, you can do that as well. So let's look into the tools. Now, uh, you already showed you how a student can use the, the arrow tool. So the line tool is kind of in a very, very same way. Just click and draw lines. I can maybe reduce this thickness here. Uh, we have the ability to uh, create arrows, right? And then of course you can make them dashed as well. So if you go and click arrow here, so you can do that. 
and let's uh, look at where the other tool is here. So there's also the ability. So there's you can select and crop parts of a picture. So for example, uh, uh, if you have a PDF which has been uploaded, and if you want want to only uh, include, say, let's say only a specific question, then what you can do is go into tools, uh, select and crop. You can do this, and then you can copy this part. And just include this and so and then you can remove the rest of the pdf if you'd like so you can uh, customize your assignments uh, if you'd like using this uh, you can also of course use it for uh, various types of images and so on there we, we now i already uh, mentioned how you can type in some text directly by just typing in uh, text uh, into the board uh, which one is that can see this but the, you also have the ability to add rich text. And so rich text for, gives you a way for, I'm sorry, this should, look, I, should, I should just click on that. I typically end up dragging it. Let me clear this. Okay. Let me go back to tools and rich text. And then if you click on this, it, it opens up a panel. Now this provides a convenient mechanism for students to type in a larger paragraphs, right? Like larger bodies of text. It becomes easier because now you can format this. It's a little, a lot more richer than just a simple text window that uh, that you get while just starting to type. And then you can click on this as well, select it, and then you can edit it further as, as well if you'd like. Then we have uh, the ability to do so, uh, 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 like a uh, infinite cloner. So for example, let me go to the next page. And uh, let me paste a uh, image for it. Let's say that I have. It shows you another ability. So I, I just looked up an image of uh, the Mars Perseverance rover. I can take a snapshot of it, go to my whiteboard, and paste it if I like. Let's see. Maybe I didn't snap for it properly. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's probably just a big image. So uh, you can go into move and resize. So let's say I want to have a smaller version of this image. I can select it. I can use this control to resize. Now, uh, you, there's also the, uh, you have the ability to select an image like this. And this opens up a few, a large number of options here. And there's a resize option here as well. It's a lot trickier to use this resize option. So I highly recommend that you just use the move and resize tool. It just is a lot more easier to work with. So just as a tip there. And um, so now if I wanted, I, what I could do is I can have, uh, you can use an infinite cloner to make multiple copies of this image. So if, if you have any object, right? So let's say I, uh, an even better example of this could be that, um, I can use the erase option here. Let's see. If that's this. Okay. Let me go to the erase now. Start putting the erases. Maybe I locked the top. So let me go to the next page. It'll be easier that way. Okay. So let's say I add some objects here. So we have a manipulatives panel here. And so there's a large number of um, manipulatives or stickers that we have here. So let's let's go to some of the math manipulatives. So let's say I have uh, the uh, ability to add multiple types of stickers. I can use the infinite cloner to make multiple copies of them. So for example, here, right? So that way, if you're preparing class boards, this becomes a lot more easier for you to create like game tokens and things like that very quickly. Then we have uh, the ability to add a link. So for example, if you wanted to embed a website into, um, or rather create a click clickable link for students. So you can uh, add a add link. And let's say that you want to navigate them, have them navigate to a website. So let's say I just want to type in google.com uh, google and I say HTTPS. So this creates a clickable link out here for the students. So for example, if I go to the student, I go to page number five. Students can just click on this link and then they would be navigated to whichever uh, content that uh, you wanted to direct them to. Right? You can also add 
um, a website link, uh, add a YouTube link as well. So let's uh, show you an example of that. So let's say you click on this and uh, I have some YouTube video link here. So let me just find that. So let's say I have, I take the YouTube link, go back to whiteboard, paste it here. Now you can also specify the start and end time. So let's say you want the students to focus on just a specific part of the video. You can specify the start and end time. And now that brings them to the video. This also opens up a panel on the student side. And whenever the student can can uh, place it, they, they start from the, the specified time. Right? Let's go to the next page to get a cleaner work area. Okay. Now, just like the YouTube, we also have uh, the ability to embed websites. So for example, let's say that uh, I open up a new tab and I look at so NBC News Kids and I, I want to have them uh, look at this website. I can just copy this link, go to whiteboard, include it here. And then they're, they're free to navigate that web page. Now, this, the good part about this is that if I go back to the student board, page number six, you, you'll see that they are locked into this particular website. They, they, they do not have the ability to um, go and navigate to any other website. So you can give them a little bit more focused uh, um, attention on a specific website uh, um, completely. Okay, let's uh, erase this for a second. Uh, I'll, let me take a second to see if there are any other questions. Um, there were one question about uh, uh, different ways of uh, typing text. Uh, if you were to teach or check their writing skills, I think one of them you already showed, which is rich text. Mm -hmm. But if there are any other things that you wish to talk about to, so that students, uh, teachers can test their writing skills. Um, I yes. guess we had so, handwriting grid and yeah. Right, right. So there's, uh, so in, in, of course, uh, uh, students can, Certainly, you know, if they are if they are on uh, on devices that have a stylus, they can they can always you know you, you draw right on the skins on the screens directly if they want. The, you can help the handwriting uh, assignments by also using what we have as grids. So we have the ability to add a handwriting grid, right? And so this will show up as a grid on the student boards and if they have styluses or you know if they if, if, if you also um, have touch screens like some of the chromebooks have touch screens you can uh, exercise some of the writing skills there uh, since we are on the topic of grids i can show you some of the other grids that are available as well so you have like a math grid that you have a slightly bigger grid now this almost acts like a little mini excel as well so you can even type in numbers and press tab and then create create simple math assignments here as also so that's another possibility that we, that this has then um, we have uh, college line, line papers you can even make it look like the, the like real um, textbook pages by just setting the background for example if i set it like this it looks like uh, irregular textbook pages as well now the really nice thing about this the rule paper is that if you open up text, it also aligns uh, text properly, right? So, so this auto outlines as well. So, and now there are several other grids. Of course, I won't go through all of them. Another one of the interesting ones here is music sheet, and uh, let me clear this out so it's easier to see it. Okay, so if you let me add the music sheet again. And uh, so this is really useful for teaching uh, music classes because uh, not only do we have sheets uh, available, but we also have in manipulatives, music is available and there's lots of um, different symbols that you can put here. Right? So uh, tons of things that you know you you'd, you'd like uh, that you'd need to teach music and so on right and and if you think that there's some specific things that you would like uh, your students to work on so let's say that you only want to introduce simple notes right so let's say that you wanted to give them the option to add half notes right and a quarter note and uh, you don't need them to go and look for these so what you can do is you can go into select and if you look down these options, there's an option to enable student to clone these notes. So we can this uh, and again select clone. Now on the student board, if I go to page number six, what the student can do is 
the student can just simply drag these and move these around so i must have picked actually student can move not student can clone by mistake so uh, let me fix that because it should normally make copies i may have done something oh i understand why i am an instruct i am actually on a student board i should have been on an instructor this is a very common mistake so please do watch for it i should go uh, uh, to my instructor board and now if i work on page 6 so let as an instructor if i add the music sheet and let me add those notes again what a note and how and let me select this make it enable student clone student clone and let me go back to the screen now and now these ones that i added i think i added these yeah so now I, as as you can see the students can directly make copies of this without really uh, requiring to go to, go to the manipulatives and really look for each of these notes notes so and you can do a bunch of really interesting assignments by by doing that uh here's another quick example since we are on the topic of cloning uh, let me upload a pdf file which has a world map on it so let's see where is the world map outline and let's say i want the students to identify africa and yeah and also uh i want them to, to point out where there are oceans oceans right so and then the, as a as an instructor what i'm going to do is i will select these so there's only going to be one africa so i'm just going to help them move it and then again enable move but there can be several areas where can there can be oceans so i'm just going to allow them to clone this and now if i go to page number 7 as a student now the student can go into move and resize and now they can pick and move these right so that way and you can see that ocean gets copies because i make made it as students can flow right okay, um yeah any other there was a question sorry sid um that how can we give access to all the tools that teacher have i think maybe it is about the access we, to students and the teachers tool how can we limit access you mean or but so here they are asking the question about maybe uh, uh guadalupe maybe you can unmute and uh, ask the question yourself so uh, so yes hi well, um you know i um i first of all this is a fabulous program and um what i'm trying to um get my kids to do now for art is to create animations you know mm -hmm. we, we can also use brain pop but i want them to create something of their own and so i know that i can you know i know how to show them how to animate but the other day or today i was trying to show them and then they told me that they didn't have the same tools so how I do i give them access and then take back the access okay so let's uh, let's see how we can go about doing that so let's say that i've added Uh, an ant out here right so again let me show everybody how i got here so this is the manipulatives panel and then i looked up animals so as you can see there's tons of uh, stickers here virtually hundreds and thousands now getting there oh, I and if you need that. if you if you <laughs> yeah if you so if you specifically need other stickers in, in here do let us know just write us write, write to us at feedback at whiteboard.chat and we can pretty quickly add them so let's say i've added a ant here now as a teacher uh, you can select and this is what uh, uh, guadalupe was talking about is you can animate this so let's say i want to animate and move this right, right. so let's say i want to create a path like this and mm -hmm. now the the ant is going to move along this path right and so if i go as a student and look at that uh, the the student also gets to see this animation and she is requesting for a way for students to be able to do the same animation mm -hmm. now let's say that um, i'm going to clear this board so it's uh, we can see what the student is doing so this is now as a student i'm going to to the manipulatives panel i'm going to look for and now uh, let me show show one more feature here just just to be a little bit more interesting so let's say i look for 
there's also a search uh, capability. So, you know, let's say this student searches for something and searches for a smiley. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if the student selects and selects this, the student also has the ability to uh, animate. So they should be able to see this. Now, uh, let's say that the student and animates and rotates it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you are unable to see that, or if your students are unable to see that option, here's what may have happened. Okay. So within the uh, this section, so this is where the settings are. There's, there's quite a few uh, options here, but what may have happened is if you customize, if you go to this customize menu options for students, mm -hmm. you have the, the options of um, uh, disabling what students can see. So uh, there's a, there's possible that some that you may have disabled something in here which is preventing that uh, option from showing up. So if mm -hmm. if for example I disable select itself, right, and if I save this, now that takes away the ability for students to be able to select objects. So as you can see, the select mechanism is gone. So they may not be able to select it and then you know find the menu option. So that's something you may want to check is that going to the gear, uh, the gear uh, panel here, the gear set, the settings panel and look for customized menu options for students. Uh, another thing that can happen is that there's, we have the ability to also um, disable. So if you can see the, the uh, number of tools here, so I have only disabled select, but another shortcut is by only clicking um, students see simple tools and that reduces the number of options even further. And uh, the other mechanism that we have is students see very simple tools, which is draw, erase, move, text, that's it. And this is almost what we call like a baby mode. And yeah. so if you do that, now that reduces the options even more. So for younger age groups, it makes sense to just reduce the options and make it easier for them to focus on specific things and uh, not have them being confused. So anything that I've checked, that's checked is what is not in their favor. That's correct. So select features to disable. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for that. We sure. were so excited. We're getting ready for open house <laughs> sometime and we want to create some stuff. Awesome. Sounds mm -hmm. great. Okay. So let's look at a few other, any other questions? Uh, no, keep going on. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot more to cover here. So we looked at website. There's also uh, the ability to add dice. There's, you can add uh, up to three. You can even program, pre-program the dice values if you'd like. And, um, uh, you can do a few things with the group boards as well. So let's hide this. Now, the way to hide this is you go back into tools and then the same place that you added uh, show dice, it becomes hide dice. So you can hide it there. Then we have uh, the ability to enter math. So you can enter some complicated, complex, fairly complex math uh, text here. So for example, if I wanted to enter X uh, uh, squared, so I can type in arrow and then plus, uh, Press down arrow and then y squared equals z squared, for example. Right, and so you can enter some fairly complex math here. And if you need help on how to enter this, go to the three dot menu. There's a help section here, so you pick it up. And there's uh, several uh, different documents that are accessible here. So we, we have uh, a downloadable teacher's guide, a student's guide, but what uh, is interesting here is the math input guide. So the math input guide has a ton of details on how, how you can enter fairly complex um, polynomials and quadratic equations, even you know summation, and you can go to trigonometry and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of valuable information here if you're a math uh, a teacher. Then uh, in tools, we have also got a way to attract students' attention. So for example, you, a teacher can attract a student's attention by adding a snake, or uh, there's also a way to add a spotlight and so on, right? And so on the students' board, boards, it becomes, uh, you can highlight specific things as well. So let's see, then we can go and uh, add text boxes. So now text boxes are often confused with the regular way to add text. The, the, the intention for adding text boxes is for create, create for the teacher to create specific areas where students can type in text. So for example, let's say that the, the teacher, I'm going to disable this pointer for a second. So select. So let's say I go into text box and I create an area here. 
right? So let's say um, I would add, let me add this. Let's say I create a simple assignment. It's maybe like a spelling assignment, all right? So let's say I search for a squirrel. All right, and I want them to spell out squirrel here, right? And so what the students can do now is that, yeah, they get to see this and they can now type in whatever they, um, they, are, they want their answer to be. So that's the intention of text boxes so that uh, specific areas uh, can be highlighted by the teacher to enter and respond to questions. But uh, another really amazing function of the, of, of the text box is that you can pre-program answers in here. So let's say I, I, so I, I select, this is what the teacher can do. So the teacher can go to select and then add answers and points. Okay, and let's say I add five points for this answer and I just type in, that's my answer. And so I save it, okay? Now, what the teacher can do is, the teacher can say, let's say this, this student types in something here, okay? That's the answer that the student has typed. Now, the teacher can go up here and say, autocorrect all boards. So this is a way for uh, uh, using whiteboard.chat to create some simple assignments where you can have whiteboard.chat actually do the correction for the teacher. And now if I look at this as a student, what's happened here is that the student got a zero out of five because it was misspelled. You can also see additional information like what the score was, what is the percentage and how many times the correction was done. Now the teacher can uh, auto correct the boards, but at the same time, if let's say the teacher wants to give the ability to the student to also check their work, you can go to add link. And let's say you create a link here and this is an autocorrect link. Let me just call it check. Oops, I shouldn't have clicked away. Add link. Save it. So now it gives the student a check box here. So now if the student corrects their answer, it says, okay, whiteboard.chat finish correction. And the correction count was two, but the answer was still not right. So now the student corrects it and then fixes and then evaluates their answer again. Now this time they've, they've got their answer right. So the teacher can uh, add multiple different text boxes and provide a check button All it will go and check everybody's answers too. Now the really co cool part about this is that you can also see their, um, their result of the correction on the grid view. So at a glance, you get to see how the students have performed in the entire assignment as well. Okay, let me pause again for a second. Is there any questions for that? Um, there was one question about that, where the text box came from, if you okay. can show it. Sure. So in the uh, tools menu, uh, there's text box option. So just click on that and then you can drag your text box. Here. And, and uh, there is one teacher uh, who is complaining that they had, they may be trying it out on their own whiteboard. There are two okay. spotlights that they are stuck together, I think, and they, Oh, they uh, should, they you should, a, you should yeah. try and maybe refresh your refresh. board. I, yeah, I suggested them, yes. So hopefully that may have cleared that problem. Uh, sure, um, Ahmed, if you wish to um, uh, unmute yourself and please uh, ask the question, it's perfectly fine. Go ahead. Hi, uh, I, uh, I see uh, the whiteboard uh, chat. It's amazing. Uh, I have a couple questions, uh, if I can. Sorry? Uh, first one, uh, can I uh, I transfer the the text uh, if there are any error in the the specific word can correct it automatically? Um, you mean uh, auto like like uh, I can uh, ink to text uh, uh, like I I try to make uh, some simple uh, word but. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, error in in some missing word. Yeah, so typically, you know, uh, we've been requested to not do auto correction of uh, words because uh, you know students uh, we don't want the students to uh, uh, to abuse that. But there are there are some other ways in which you can do that. So, for example, let's say um, um, let's say I type in a word here, right? And on on the on a Mac, what you can do is you can you can sort of, uh, once you go into edit mode, 
anywhere in this text. Now, if I deep click on this, I get the basically a help to you know how to if there's any spell check and stuff like that, it'll tell you about it. So you can do that. Um, another thing you can do is you can uh, go to the we've got a feature called immersive reader. So if you go to read an immersive reader, it it brings up Microsoft's immersive reader where it can highlight certain spell spelling mistakes and it it can actually even read. For example, if you have longer uh, so yeah so for example uh, let's say i can edit this text okay. so, and then if i click on this read an immersive reader it can actually read out the baby that text, is hungry right and so you can it can point out spelling mistakes it can also help you fix some of your grammar it can do some additional really amazing things. Uh, for example, it can also translate things for you. So for example, if I go into, let's say maybe Croatian, and I move this, so it can do some things like that. So there's few different ways that we, you can maybe reach out to us and uh, we can help you more specifically, um, um, maybe in a separate Google meeting if possible. Okay, any other questions? Correct, uh, correct, uh, a mess question. Uh, like, uh, if I uh, make something uh, like you, you write a mess question, uh, and I need the, to to transfer it to uh, if I write a text, uh, ink to mess. Do you mean? Do you know this? Um, I think uh, uh, maybe if no. you're referring to automatic correction of a mathematical equation, yes, then yes, yes, yes. We, uh, so you can do that. Uh, so we don't necessarily have it uh, uh, like an automatic, like for example, you can use the text box to enter your own answers. Uh, but if you are asking that if can we correct a polynomial equation and find an error in the mathematical equation ourselves? No, yeah, that's yes, uh, yes. Yes, yeah, that we we haven't built that into it. Thank you. Yes, this is I I, I also need it. Uh, is, there, is there are a rule uh, in uh, in mess? In uh, so we, um, yeah. uh -huh, go ahead. Go go ahead, double Baba. You say no, no, no. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, so I'm 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 not sure what do you mean by in mess. Uh, rule rule uh, uh, okay. rule in, in mess in the in the manipulators. You mean? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. You're, you're so, talking about an each ruler. And we have set squares and rulers and uh, others are even protectors. Yeah. All so let me show that. Math. So in manipulatives, yeah. if you go into math, right? So if you have uh, all the math symbols there, so you can use that. And then you go into manipulatives, you, we have yes, a, lot of, yes. a lot of these That's here. So, so we have this, we have, um, also, uh, place value disks, number number icons, number lines. We have, um, let's see, I was looking for, yes, I was looking for protractor, set square. So a lot of the geometry stuff you can do. There's also the tools to um, uh, go and, um, actually I have this called these calculators. So we have a basic calculator. We also have a way to add a graphing calculator. So for example, if you That's want amazing. To you want to do something like x cubed you can do that so yes x cubed. so you can do some pretty complex stuff like this uh, students can take a snapshot of their graph here for example let's say if i clear out this and um, then you can also paste this in here so let me close this so you can also show your show your work in in this manner if you'd like then um, the we also have some really amazing factories so i'll show you what factories mean here so there's a tile factory which lets you create for example a few different tiles like this so you can create qu quickly things now you can type in some really uh, different types of things so you can type it in different uh, languages and symbols you can even bring up like a, a emoji uh, input uh, mechanism so let's say i can put in an apple here and I would create um, 
another set of tiles for me with with symbols here and then you can always mark these automatically a student can flow or student can move so that students can easily manipulate them now you can use the tile factory to also create cards for example so let's say i want to make uh, cards like this so you can do uh, uh, games uh, using cards you can even uh, you can have them flip over so for example i can do this i can put a semicolon here and if i do that uh, let me just clear this so that i won't get overlapping cards and create them again so now if you do that you can flip over the cards you can even create matching cards so for example let's call let's do this let's put these here and i'm going to try and put uh, a monkey here right and now uh, i wanted to make matching cards clear this and what this does is it uh, it so if i go as a student it it's uh, it's almost like an exercise that you can do where the student can select one card so let's see the student i have disabled my options here let me re enable them okay save and refresh my board so i get to see some select options here yeah and now i can if i select this card this student can move right here. Yeah. So now that the the students can select these cards, and if they select the wrong ones, wrong pair, nothing happens. But if you end up selecting the right pair, then they disappear, right? So you can make some games like that. So this is uh, one of some of the things that you can do with um, the tile factory. There's we also have a couple of other factories in here. One is the form factory. The form factory is really uh, useful as a way to uh, almost like a poll mechanism. So, for example, if I say uh, I give it a label, what did you lunch? And I give different check boxes. So, for example, I want uh, radio bar. Let's say I give check boxes for um, ice and. Uh, and let's say I want uh, a regular question. Say, uh, oh, and my radio buttons are yes. And create that form. Right. So now, as a student, I can see this form here, and you can select uh, the student selects the answers, and then hit submit. Now, when the student uh, submits their response, this changes color. So you should make sure that this changes changes color. Otherwise, their response is not recorded. And now the teacher can um, look at the results. And so, yeah, so you can see a graph format of uh, what the responses were, how many students picked which answer. Now, these uh, um, the responses are anonymized, as you can see that the name is hidden. But if you want to expose them, you can say show student name, and it shows you the student name as well. So this is a really useful uh, way to get some feedback from the students. There's um, also a, a large number of different uh, tools. Actually, I'm sort of running out of time, but uh, there's there's ways to add shapes, standard sort of shapes. Uh, interesting one is polygon. So if you say I want a, a hexagon, and I say set, so that's what you get. And then you can always resize it quite easily, right? So you can do that. Uh, there's um, also, a few fun things like musical instruments. So you can add a xylophone, for example, here, and play that. So turn it out for my headphones out. My headphones out. Um, so then we've got a molecule editor. So for chemistry teachers, you can even create molecules like this, uh, and then also copy the. Uh, the scalable vector graphic of it and then paste the images in here too so that's another thing that um, oh, i guess i'd be copy 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 a scalable vector graphic 
there you go so so the students can work on these these molecules as well now the, we have the ability to also uh, edit this so the students can um, for example go here and select this molecule and edit it as well so you can create assignments here in that manner too now uh, there's there's a lot of uh, i didn't get a chance to to uh, explain or show demonstrate these uh, guys So uh, we didn't get a, a lot of chance to look at the manipulatives more in detail. So I, I certainly encourage you to look at that. There's lots of stuff in here. There's 3D shapes. There's reward stickers that you can do. So for example, if if I look at my grid view and if I go to Dhawal's board and say, okay, I want to give him a reward, right? So I can say, I want to add well done to his board. I can go and click on that. And then as you can see, he, he will, let me refresh this. And there is one uh, very simple question. Um, yes. How do you expand the lap side toolbar so the, the the their actual names are visible? Can you show them the top uh, hamburger menu? Yes. So this is um, out yeah. here. So you can do that. Yes. Uh, and another thing that you want to keep in mind is that quite often when your screen is not as as tall or as high that in in terms of um, visibility. Oops what you can do so this this often happens like this so if i go here now you don't get to see the full tool toolbar but you have a scroll bar here on the side so you can use a scroll bar to you know go, um, make sure that you have access and visibility to everything this also happens with some of the tools up here so you will get a horizontal scroll bar if your screen is too small so let me see if i can yeah there you go so now you can scroll this as well so just to be make sure that you know you have um uh, you are aware that you you know you can scroll these items as well. So go to my book, and then so you we were looking at the manipulatives. There's maybe a final set of manipulatives I'd like to show is uh, let's see if I go to page twelve here, and we also have some widgets out here which are really interesting. So we have a way to add a clock so students can work on uh, learning how to tell time. We can also have a color clock so that you can you know, show them, explain to them how it works in terms of a quarter of an hour and so on. We have a way to add a spinner. So the students can, uh, you can use this for certain games and for selecting certain options. You can change, customize the spinner as well. So for example, if I reduce this and update it, it changes. And you can also have a student name spinner. This automatically adds the, the names of your participants into your spinner. So as the students join in, this will keep changing as well. So um, let me do one thing. Since we are almost uh, we're above time, uh, over time, actually, I'm going to stop my recording. But we can continue with uh, some of the demonstrations and some Q&A.